Hey, what's up guys? The build show today all about attics. Now we're in a 1980s built house here and we're gonna upgrade the insulation on this project. But before we do that, let me tell you there's two different ways that you could upgrade the insulation. Either we could air seal and add more insulation here or we could use spray foam at the roof line. Now we're in Texas. Uh, this is a typical vented attic, very common to see from houses built from the 1960s or 70s all the way to today. There's even new construction in Texas that looks just like this attic with ductwork up here, uh, with insulation up here. Remember, we have no basements in Texas, so typically you're gonna see ductwork and a furnace air conditioner up in this attic space. But this is also common throughout the South. There are even some Northern houses, and this video is gonna help you no matter what, if you're thinking about your insulation in your attic. So first off, we thought about spray foam at the roof line, but the reason why we didn't do it was this right here. See this vent behind me that's coming from this gas furnace? This is what they call a atmospheric vented furnace, meaning it's about 80% efficient. It's drawing the air from the attic. Uh, it's burning that uh, air with the natural gas that's coming in or propane. And then this vent here is sending the flue gases out. This vent gets very hot and it's drawing air in from the attic. So we cannot spray foam this attic without changing this system out to a heat pump. We don't want any gas atmospheric vented appliances up here. Now, if this was vented with PVC, like a 90% plus furnace, we would have been good to go. We could have sealed off our vents, we could have spray foamed everything, sucked out the insulation and we'd be fine. But this furnace is pretty new. We didn't want to go to that expense. So what we're gonna to do today is a version of a video we've done in the past that I'm gonna call insulation 2.0. First, the issue with this attic is not that it's low in insulation, although it is, but the issue here is that we've got a pretty leaky connection between the attic and the house below. We did a pre-blow order test and my buddy Sean figured out that this house is a nine ACH 50. That's a measure of how leaky the house is. And a big part of that leakiness is coming from this attic to the house. New construction in Texas uh, requires a five ACH 50. New construction in Northern climates requires a three ACH 50. So this house is about three times leakier really than it should be uh, if this was new construction. And here's the reason why. We've got a bunch of cans like this one over here and we've got other things like um, vents from the outside or pardon me, bath vents, things like that that have cuts in the drywall, as well as we're probably, when we suck this out, we're gonna find wires through top plates and other things like that that are not sealed. And those are letting a lot of air leak between the attic and the house below. You know, a lot of the dust that you find in your attic is actually small particles of insulation that's getting sucked back in your attic. And here's why, see these vents that are here? When these vents blow uh, cold air or hot air into the house, there's a little bit of leakage that happens in every system. And when these vents leak, it's causing the house to be depressurized because we're losing air out of the house and the house needs to make up that air. And one place that it makes it up is around all the cutouts in the drywall between this attic and this in the space below. And when that air leaks in, it's bringing in all the garbage, all the nastiness from this space above. So on today's video, we're gonna show you exactly how to do it. Today's build show, Attic Insulation 2.0. Let's get going. Everybody, let me introduce you to Quincy Bishop with True R Value. Now, this is not an insulation company. This is a home performance company. Quincy, you did a great job sucking this insulation out. It, it almost looks like new construction up here, even though this house is like 40 years old. Talk to me about that process. How hard is it to suck that out? And why is it that a lot of people don't like doing that process? So the insulation removal is the most difficult part of the process. Um, you had fiberglass in here, so it wasn't too bad, but whenever you have cellulose and rock wool, it's really, uh, it's really dense and heavy, so it takes a long time to get it out. 
Uh, but it's really important to get all the insulation out. That way you can expose the attic floor mm -hmm. so you can see all the penetrations that you need to seal. Yeah, we need to see all the flaws in the attic. And I would say the flaws kind of uh, come into just a few categories, right? right. Uh, and the first and probably the biggest leaker that I see here is your can lights. These are older can lights, especially leaky. They were non-insulation contact can lights, right. so you saw the insulation was, put, was kind of pushed away. Massive amount of airflow through there. I suspect that that's a big part of our very leaky blower door score. Talk me through the process of air sealing one of those and insulating them. Uh, so you're absolutely right. The can lights are notorious for being very uh, energy inefficient. And the way to seal them is we have the 10 mat rock wool covers. So all you have to do is you just have to notch out for your wire penetration. You just slide it right over the can light, make sure you have good clearance around the whole thing, and then hit it with the foam around the rock wool to the drywall and then around the, the penetration for your wiring. Yeah, and just to clarify, that's not actually rock wool. We're using that as a kind of generic term. They're probably mineral wool based. Exactly. Uh, and you're buying those where exactly? So we're getting them at Energy Efficient Solutions. They have a location up north in Austin, and I believe they also have a location in Dallas. But I bet you can find them online as well. And those work for really any uh, can, whether it's an insulation contact or a non-IC rated can, uh, old or new, those are, work, those are gonna work on all those. And I would tell you that I don't trust the air sealed insulated ones that are in new construction cans. I don't think they're as airtight as what they say they are. So even if you had a five, 10 year old house that had supposedly airtight cans, I would still seal them with that. Okay, what's the next biggest leaker would you say in this attic? Uh, the next big leaks would be your top plates. Um, and on your top plates, that's the connection between your drywall and the framing and then Throughout all that, you also have plumbing penetrations and electrical penetrations. Yeah, so anywhere you see a hole and a wire coming through it, most likely that outlet on the wall below was leaking air and you never realized that, but it was leaking air both directions, either down uh, or out. And then plumbing penetrations is a big source of leaks. Now we didn't find any chases in this right. attic, but talk to me about what happens when you find a big chase. And by chase, I'm, I'm usually talking about a big square where there's you could basically see all the way down into the house. Those are a big source of air leaks. How do we seal those? Uh, so with those, yes, it's just a void within your building envelope. And usually what we'll use is we'll use foam board over it. And from there, we'll seal it with foam. Um, and that way you get a good seal and you bring your thermal boundary to the attic floor as well. Yeah, I like it. Okay, now next we've got HVAC boots. Uh, and there's really, you can seal those from the inside or the outside or both. Uh, on new construction, I like to pull the, before the registers get installed, I like to caulk between the drywall and the boot. We'll use a good high quality flexible sealant like Big Stretch and caulk that drywall to boot connection. But up in the attic, how are you guys doing that? Um, so typically we will take the fire block foam and we'll just seal it the same way we're sealing with the top plates and everything else, just the HVAC boot to the drywall. And then like Matt mentioned before, as far as pulling down the grill, we'll also do that on the first floor since you don't have access to it on the second floor. Now, if you were going to do a more comprehensive um, home performance evaluation, we didn't do a duct blaster test, and these ducts are fairly new up in this attic done by a contractor we know. So I suspect we're in relatively good shape. If you have an older house, if you're a little suspect on the duct work, you might consider getting that done as well because we're not really looking at the ducts per se today, but that could be a big source of air leakage. You might want to check that out as well. Okay, so we've talked HVAC boots, we've talked uh, cans, we've talked top plates. What am I missing, Quincy? Um, the other thing we sealed was the mechanical fan. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah so, so the bathroom, bathroom exhaust. Yep. And then junction boxes too. If you've got a fan, exactly. uh, you know, ceiling fan, let's say, or, or maybe a, uh, a ceiling mounted fixture, right. you're gonna have that junction box sticking up and that's a big uh, source of air leaks as well. We're gonna seal that with can foam. Now this haddock has two other kind of odd things going on. One is the baffles. They're missing in a bunch of places and the baffles are short from actually hitting the top plate where they need to. And baffles are critical. Those baffles, uh, when Quincy re-insulates here, are gonna keep that insulation from number one, falling into the soffit area. But even more importantly, it's gonna keep the wind when it blows outside from wind washing your insulation. I learned this the hard way at my house when I remodeled almost 20 years ago and I didn't put baffles in. I insulated that, it looked awesome the day I blew it in there in my attic and I came back a year later and realized, oh my gosh, the wind blowing blew all that insulation back and I had no insulation on the bottom or the outer one to two feet around my whole house. I had to go back and retrofit those baffles. 
That was a big mistake. You need those baffles in place. Now, we're in Texas, Quincy. We get a lot of uh, beating Texas sun. That's right. Talk to me about radiant barriers. Uh, so we like to use the radiant barrier to complement insulation 2.0. So with insulation 2.0, we're taking care of uh, convection and conduction heat, but we're also not taking care of the radiant heat. Uh, so that helps by putting the uh, radiant barrier on the roof rafters to kind of combat that radiant heat. Um, since this is a vented attic, we're not doing spray foam. So that's, it helps to lower the temperature in the attic. That way the ductwork isn't battling that heat load as much. Yeah, you're still going to have a hot attic, trust right. me. Uh, and it's still not as efficient as having a conditioned attic, but it's going to help greatly. And this house, Quincy, uh, is a friend of mine. He had this radiant barrier installed 10, 15 years ago. It's right. falling down. It's not as good as we would have done it uh, new, but it's doing its job. So we're not going to spend his money by ripping this down and redoing it because uh, it's getting you know, 70, 80 percent of the benefit. Uh, so now that the air sealing is done and we've really done a good job of air sealing, what's the last couple steps we need to do here? All right, so we got everything removed. We got everything air sealed. The next thing would be to install the new insulation. Uh, we'll blow that to, so code is R38 um, for, for Austin, but typically we recommend to go to R49 for our climate zone. Yeah, I think that's really smart. And it's really pennies on the dollar right. at that point to do that work. Um, can you give us any guidance on cost for a project like this? I know we've got a national audience. Right. I don't want to pen you down if someone's watching this five years from now. Right. But is this, you know, a twenty thousand dollar project or a two thousand dollar project? Uh, typically, you're usually exceeding about ten k. Yep. Um, and the price range is still pretty close to four to six dollars. Uh, we charge four dollars and fifty cents up to six dollars, depending if you're getting radiant barrier as well. Okay, and that's for the suck out and the insulation and the reboil. Yes, sir. Per square foot. Yes, sir. There you go. There's some there's some guidance for you. That's going to change. Obviously, Boston's going to be a different price than right. rural Missouri or Austin, Texas, a big metro <laughs> area. But that'll at least give you some guidelines. Okay, now that insulation is in place, we're looking nice and white and fluffy up here. What's the last step in the process? Uh, the next thing we're gonna seal is the uh, pull-down ladder. So they're pretty notorious for not being sealed and being insulated. So we have an attic hatch guardian. Uh, what we do is we put it over there. It's insulated, it has a radiant barrier on there, and then we seal it to the uh, drywall. That way it's insulated and sealed. Very cool. So now we are not gonna get that massive amount of air leak through there. And right. we've got some good insulation there. Maybe not quite as high of insulation as the rest of the attic. Right but much, much better than before, which was this month's installation. Exactly. Now, Quincy, not everybody uh, watching this is in Austin, Texas and can hire you. Right. How do we find someone like you across the country? What do we look for? So typically, uh, keywords would be to look for a home performance company, uh, not your, just your traditional uh, blow-and-go insulation company. Yeah, because it's not just about re-insulating. It's about doing all these other things as well and having a little bit of good building science knowledge, which right. Quincy does, to understand like we talked about earlier at the very beginning of the video, this homeowner, my friend, wanted to do spray foam in the attic, and Quincy came up and immediately said, hey, time out, we can't do that. We've got this atmospherically vented gas appliance, meaning air is drawn out of the flue just by natural action, and if we were to come in here and spray foam this, we could have backdrafting of those flue gases, and that kills people. That is not good, we don't wanna do that. And there is a way to get around that. You could build a big airtight box around that ductwork. Very, very difficult. I've really not seen that done successfully very often. Really hard to accomplish that. So in an attic like this, that we're not replacing the uh, main HVAC system to a heat pump or to a 90% efficient gas furnace, which vents with a fan and with PVC pipes, this is our next best choice. And I would say this is getting 70 or 80% of the benefit of a spray foamed attic. Now we lose the storage space and some of the other benefits uh, of a spray foamed conditioned attic space, but for the money and the uh, ability to do it, this is really doing a great job. And this is, like I said, gonna give us a lot of the benefit. Quincy, I really appreciate your help, brother. Of course. Thank you so much. Uh, last thing I would tell you is if you're watching this video, you're out of Texas, you're somewhere else, or even in Texas, and you're looking for a, a Quincy style contractor that gets it, Ask him to do insulation 2.0. We made our video two, three years ago. It's been real successful. This is a follow-up to that. I'll put a link to that one in the description below. Forward him this video and forward him that video and say, hey, can you do this like this for my house? Uh, we coined this together, insulation 2.0. I like that phrase. It's not just about insulating. You need a smart uh, contractor to really understand the science behind what we're doing and why we're doing it. And to catch all those mistakes that were made 
uh, when this house was first built and correcting those. Hey guys, we missed something that I wanted to add on this video. Uh, Quincy, talk to me about what you found over here in this garage attic with house next door. So a lot of times with these two-story structures, uh, you're gonna have a knee wall within your garage space. And for this one, it's actually open to the mid floor. So this is just a air highway for air leakage. Super highway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Big um, open air leak. And they have the old bats on there. So what we'll do is we already pulled out the bats uh, and then we're gonna hit it with two inch closed cell foam. That way they get, uh, they get the thermal vapor and thermal boundary, a good seal. And we'll also spray foam all the lumber, so the thermal boundary will be continuous. Yeah, and that'll seal off that, that uh, big air leak. And using some closed cell foam here makes a lot of sense because we've got a rat's nest of wires running through that space that are not drilled, they're just kind of open. So talk me through the process of how you do that. What will you use as a backer for that spray foam, Quincy? Uh, so for this open area, I'll go ahead and just use some Tyvek. Um, that way I just have a solid surface to spray on. Obviously over here, I'm gonna go straight to the drywall and then spray foam the studs as well. Yep, makes sense. And so you cut it around the wires. And then for the closed cell foam, Quincy's gonna use a two pound spray foam kit, uh, which is a smaller tank. It kind of looks like a propane bottle and a propane bottle, part A, part B. It mixes together in a wand. He'll spray that up, we'll get two inches, so we'll get uh, good insulation value, but really more importantly uh, is that good air sealing value. Exactly. Great job, Quincy. Again, that's why you wanna hire a home performance contractor and not just an insulator, because this kind of problem could be a massive part of this person's expensive energy bills. And if we re-insulated but miss this, we would be missing a giant piece of the energy equation and comfort equation and dust equation, all those things that come in with air leaks. I forgot to mention in this video that after we were done, we came back for a final blower door. My buddy Sean Harris did this for us, and we ended up reducing infiltration by about 30%. The final blower door score was 6.3 ACH50. We started with a nine. I think there's a little bit more work that could be done in this house to get it a little bit lower but that's a great result. And I think that we're gonna see a reduction both in energy bills and a big increase in comfort on this house. So anyways, Quincy, really appreciate it, man. Thank you very much for the excellent work over here. I'll put a link to his company in the description as well uh, and his Instagram feed. But if you're not currently a subscriber, guys, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. And by the way, on thebuildshow.com, I currently have 10 new videos a week talking about building science and architecture and best practices and how to build a really good house shot at builders and architects jobs across the country. I'll have a link in the description to our newsletter you can sign up for and I'll email you twice a week with here's what's new on our site. I'd love to have you join us over on thebuildshow.com. Follow me on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.